Huyo bwana Gachagua nimesema ni mtu ambaye astahili awe anakuwa kama mnaibu wa rais wa taifa. Manake mdomo yake ni chafu. Nothing will come out of those talks is a waste of time. I am telling you as the president of the Republic of Kenya. So nyinyi wakamba mungoje hiyo mazungumzo mtakuja kutafuta sisi because there is nothing. Ile mazungumzo kadhaa wametumwa hakuna hakuna kitu hapa ya kuzungumza. Raila tayari alizima mambo yake. Alimalizia Mombasa. Hii ni mambo tu ya kuzungusha wa Kenya. Kuzungusha wa Kenya there is nothing. Anatoa maneno ambaye inaweza kuleta mapigano katika taifa. Lakini yeye inasemekana ni naibu wa rais wa taifa la Kenya. Lakini anajifanya kama yeye ni naibu rais wa taifa ya Mlima Kenya. Upande zile za Kenya zingine ni kigeni kwake. Akaongea na anasema wao na sisi. Na tena anasema Kenya ni kampuni ambayo zina hisa kuna wengine wana hisa mingi zaidi kuna wengine wana hisa chache na wengine hawana chochote sasa hiyo inaweza kugawanya nchi hata ikani mtu ambaye ni makamu wa rais wa taifa atenganishe watu ati hao ni vikundi ni wa serikali hao ni maadui wa serikali manake kuna tofauti ya vyama ya, ya siasa na vyama yani serikali inatakana itoe huduma kwa watu wote sawa na usawa manake serikali inatoza usuru pesa ya serikali inatoka kwa usuru ya wananchi na hakuna eneo ambaye inasemekana hii ni eneo ya wafuasi wa serikali ini eneo ya maadui ya serikali wa Kenya wote wanatoa ushuru sawa ukiweka ushuru kwa sukari kila mtu analipa ukiweka kwa, kwa uh, uh, mafuta kila mtu analipa kodi ya nyumba kila mtu analipa sasa wewe ukisema ati wao na sisi sasa hiyo ni nchi gani wewe bwana gachagwa inatakikana asiwe naibu wa rais wa taifa ya Kenya naibu kubwa sana kwa mtu kama hiyo anaweza kuwa naibu wa, wa rais wa taifa la chochote sio Kenya peke yake mm-hmm. a very good morning ladies and gentlemen this is Elijah Gishoro welcome back to my YouTube channel and in case you're new here tap that subscribe button but if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for joining me because uh, without you I could not be doing this videos like i say this is the greatest youtuber in the republic of kenya and the e in my name stands for exactly what you need raila amolo odinga the opposition chief of the republic of kenya uh, has come out to say that gashagua is unfit to be the deputy president of kenya or was still the deputy president of any country the world so this came out as raila was being interviewed by a local media station and he gave these sentiments against uh, the deputy president saying that akona mdomo chafu like he has a filthy language okay um the way he addresses kenyans is not fit is not befitting uh to be the stature of a deputy president in fact in his own admission he says that uh, Gashago was completely unfit to be the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya and is actually a disgrace an embarrassment uh, to the office or to the presidency remember after the advent of the new constitution 2010 that was promulgated on August 2010 the presidency was conjoined meaning that the president and the deputy president are joined in the hip and you cannot be able to separate those two offices that's why you find that even if a deputy president is not aligned to the agenda or is is, is tripping from the agenda of the party or the wishes of the president like we saw William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta when William Ruto was a deputy president there is no way a president can be able to sack his deputy unlike in the past in the past presidents used to appoint 
their vice president. And we have seen throughout the years, we have had over 10 or 12 uh, vice presidents, but we have only had uh, five presidents, okay? So meaning, there are presidents who maybe were dying, others were being fired and things like that. So they are conjoined in the heap, and even in the ballot, their ticket or their vote comes as one. We can't choose one minus the other. Uh, you choose as, as one as a ticket. So uh, Raila Odinga is deeply concerned about the utterances of the deputy president, uh, be it uh, because according to the admission of the opposition chief, he's saying that the deputy president is behaving as though he is the deputy president of Mount Kenya region and not the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. And that makes it uh, that makes him alienate a whole uh, the other part of the entire country uh, makes him alienate the, the entire region or the, the entire parts of the other country which are much much bigger even than the, the small Mount Kenya region and uh, he feels that a president remember in the constitution the president is a symbol of national unity you're not supposed to be the president of your tribe you're supposed to be the president of the entire a Republic of Kenya. So, it's supposed to talk, champion, and 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 uh, work on the agenda of the entire nation. In fact, as a president or a deputy president, you should not speak in your local dialect because there are people from other regions who will not understand what you're saying. So, you're supposed to uh, speak uh, in 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 a language that everybody can be able uh, to understand. Okay everybody within the territory of the Republic of Kenya can be able to get what exactly you are saying. So, we have seen utterances uh, by the Deputy President such as the government is a matter of shares. Okay, This is a statement that has made uh, the uh, opposition leader to be very, very infuriated because he says that if you're telling us the government is a shareholding company such that the more shares you have, the more positions you get. And the deputy president simply means this. There are people who campaigned for William Bruto. There are people who are uh, beaten up. There are people whose name was tarnished. There are people who, whose reputation was tarnished. There are people who really, really suffered uh, for the sake of the presidency. You know, There are people who... Uh, are discriminated for the sake of the president, the people who lost jobs, the people who lost careers because of the president, uh, William Bruto. And these are the people he calls shareholders because when it's now time to reap the benefits, when it's now time uh, to take over or uh, to, to, to get the, sh the spoils yeah, of, of the government that has been right now, these people should be at the forefront. These are the people who should be lining up uh, to get the share of government because they worked for it, they really toiled for it, they really suffered for it, and therefore they deserve the best uh, of this government. But on the contrary, Raila Odinga is opined to this op opinion because he says, when you increase taxes on sugar, every Kenyan pays the taxes, despite uh your your political orientation you can be in the opposition you can be in government but you still pay their tax he also says that when you pay for something like um fuel you know and you increase the taxes on fuel everybody across board pays for taxes on fuel so there's no way you can come out here and tell us that um there are some people who who, who own more shares in government Yet we are all paying the same taxes, so that is the, that has been the argument. We are paying the same taxes, and there is no way you can come out here and start telling people that there are people who have more shares uh, than others, and there are people who are more entitled to positions than others. Because at the end of the day, everybody pays uh, an equal measure of taxes. So. Some other sentiments by the deputy president include things like the bipartisan talks will go nowhere. That is a statement by the deputy president. That the talks will go nowhere. And Raila Odinga is not sincere. Raila Odinga is not genuine about these talks. And all that he wants is just a, to broker a power sharing deal, to just see himself get into the government. That is all that he wants. 
according to the deputy president and he says that that is impossible it's 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 a mirage it's something that can never ever happen because this is a tactic that he has been using over the years he comes uh, starts disrupting more government more put, puts him in the government he starts disturbing kibaki kibaki gives him the prime minister he disturbed Uru Kenyatta. Uru Kenyatta uh, brought the BBI and things like that. Now he's still using the same strategy to distract the current regime so that the current regime can actually factor him in into the, the, the government. But the deputy president says that that is not possible and it will not happen so long as the government is firmly under the uh, William Ruto administration. It is not something that will happen. And this is the thing that infuriates uh, the opposition leader because the deputy president has zero chills. He takes the battle right to the doorstep of uh, Raila Odinga. He, he does not give him a, a space to breathe or anything. He takes the battle right to, at his doorstep. The other day he was arguing about Kalonzo going to state house that Kalonzo is going to state house at night. Why can't he come during the day? And why why is he uh, not being chased away from Azimio? Why is Raila Odinga chasing away MPs who are going to sort development projects at State House? But if Kalonzo is at State House, he's not being evicted from the party. So he was saying that these people are not genuine and all these talks will culminate into nothing at all. Nothing. Because at the end of the day, what they want is a share of government. There is nothing that they are talking about the government is not addressing, you know. And therefore, at the end of the day, uh, they'll come up with uh, resolutions uh, to have them get into government, which uh, they say or which the Kenya Congress says is something that will not actually uh, happen and will not be allowed to happen because. The moment you bring Raila Odinga, in fact, that is what the deputy president said. We fear you because we brought you into government during Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta started hating us. You know. Now you want us to bring to bring you to uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government, and then now you also William Ruto to start hating them uh, when you do that. So the, the argument is it cannot happen like that because. Previously, we have seen how hard or difficult it has been um, when you get into government, you spoil everything, you make everything uh, go uh, badly, and therefore there is no need of actually having you in government. Thank you guys for watching this video. This has been your guy, Elijah Lichero. I hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, adios and see you in the next one.